Podcasting is an amazing way to teach your audience and build the deeper connection with them. And in this video, I want to talk to you about four secrets that help that can help take your podcast to that next level and really create an even stronger bond and a stronger community around your show. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome. My name is Nick Walkowski, and I'm one of the virtual event production managers at CUNA. Uh, but in addition to working for CUNA for the last couple of years, uh, doing all kind of virtual productions, um, I also have a big background in podcast producing and just live streaming different conferences and different events and some like video producing and freelancing. Uh, and I am super excited about podcasting, and which is one of the reasons I wanted to jump in and talk just a little bit about um, some of these topics here and what I would consider podcasting 2.0, if you will. Um, there's a big shift right now happening in kind of the podcasting world, and that is very specifically around kind of this first secret to getting the most out of your podcast, getting the most out of your show, and that is video podcasting. There's some incredible opportunities right now to really increase the amount of engagement that your audience has and to really increase uh, the feeling of community and connection that they have to you and your show. Um, specifically, when you jump into video, uh, it, it creates that, it allows them to see you. It allows them to uh, put a face with the name to really build that connection. We all know that we are more connected to people when we're able to see them. Uh, you know, talking on the phone is great, but having a video conference or a video call is even better because you're able to read body cues, you're able to read body language, you're able to uh, just kind of develop more of a relationship with whoever you're talking to, whoever you're listening to. Uh, and right now, uh, I think, is the time to jump in and add video podcasting to your current show because I think there are just lots of other opportunities. We'll get to some of that later, but let's just talk about what it would take to add a video element to your current audio-only podcast. Chances are right now adding a video element to your current podcast uh, would be a pretty small lift. It would likely not take a lot of extra work in order to add that video, video component because I would assume most likely if you are doing uh, interviews, you're probably remote interviews especially, you're probably using something like Zoom or another service like that where all it would really take is to turn on your camera to get it at a very basic level um, obviously, there's multiple different ways to increase the production quality of your show, but it could be as simple as turning on a, a webcam, getting your phone, or doing something like that, uh, and just turning on the camera in Zoom when you're recording, if that's how you're doing it. If you're doing it in person, it could be as simple as a single camera or even a cell phone off in the, off in the corner that gets, say, both of you, if it's an interview piece, or if it's just you on the podcast, obviously, that's a lot easier, um, and it's a lot easier easier to get great quality audio. I'm already going to assume that you're getting great quality audio because you're doing a podcast um, and have that audio only. But if you are brand new to podcasting and interested in that, I would really pay attention to your audio and get um, some good quality mics and find some great ways that you can go about actually recording that. And once you add that video element to your podcast, that actually unlocks a lot of other potential for that show. A lot of different, it, it lot will allow you to distribute this in a much broader way and again, increase that connection. Uh, so these other secrets are kind of dependent on adding that video element to your show, but let's dive in and talk about those because I think the secret number two is one of the biggest ones. YouTube in the last few months uh, just added podcasting to its platform. I really recognize it as a standalone type of feature, as something that they want to focus on and really pour some elements into. Yes, video podcasts have been hosted on YouTube for a long time. I I started putting some up there back in 2008. So they've been there forever. Um, they've been there in an audio format with a graphic. They've been there in video interviews and kind of back and forth multi-cam productions, talk show style. They have been there for a while, but now YouTube is really leaning into that here this year. Um, they've added this podcasting feature, which allows you to easily upload a podcast. There's a few little extra little elements that you get to do with that. Um, it, uh, the way playlists interact to give you the ability to have either an episodic podcast where people can always hear the latest episode or have a serialized podcast where people would start at the very beginning um, of a playlist with the first video and go all the way to the end to the, the latest video that was released. 
Uh, so there's just a lot of different opportunities that they're leaning into. And I think it's something you're going to want to explore because YouTube is putting a ton of effort into making sure that people are seeing podcasts. So why would you want to put your podcast on YouTube? Well, I think there's a few big reasons. One, like I mentioned, they are kind of leaning into it. So you're going to get some some big focus here in the next probably year, couple of years around that to really see if they can get it off the ground and really make a dent in the podcasting space. Uh, besides that, though, the nice thing, uh, one of the big nice things I like about it, possibly honestly my favorite thing about it, is the way it allows conversations to happen. Uh, so in just about every other podcasting format, every other podcasting place, it's very difficult to have any sort of ongoing conversation with your listeners or with your viewers. So on iTunes, it's very, uh, on Apple Podcasts, it's very difficult to have any sort of comments. Um, but in YouTube, those comments are built right in. There is a comment section under every single video, so it's easy for somebody to talk about the episode with other people in your community. Uh, it's easy for you to respond to those in text and chat. Um, and it's just a great way that whether your episode, somebody hears your episode three months later, they're able to contribute to a conversation around that show. And that's just not possible on any other platform. And I think the reason uh, this is so big is because it creates that community feel. It allows people to have more engagement. If there, somebody's trying to have a conversation around that, around your show, it either happen, has to happen, you have to be big enough where it happens on, say, Reddit, or you, you get tweets about it, and people can tweet about it, and then it just doesn't allow for a nice, easy thread of conversation, it doesn't allow you to see all that conversation around that show, around that topic. So that's a huge leg up uh, that I think YouTube has over just about every other platform out there that uh, does any sort of podcasting. Another big thing is purely their discoverability. Um, a platform like Apple Podcasts, discoverability on it is not great. Usually you're going there um, because you know what podcasts you want to listen to uh, and you, you just go there for that and you only hear about other podcasts through word of mouth or through other means and you go there to actually connect to the podcast. Same with many other podcast players. Spotify is doing a little bit better job of with that discoverability, but YouTube is going to try to find viewers for your video. Um, it, YouTube wants to put videos that people want to watch in front of them. The algorithm is really good at that. Uh, and so there's just going to be more opportunity for people to see and hear your podcast. But if you're putting your podcast on YouTube, what should it look like? Well, I'm going to recommend that you try to lean away from just say putting a graphic or uh, waveforms or something like that up as your video element. Yep, totally possible. It could be a good way to kind of get some of your back catalog up on YouTube if you wanted to. Um, that might be a great idea, uh, but I'd highly recommend trying to add more of that actual component, showing the people, like we mentioned earlier, uh, turning the cameras on in Zoom or having that conversation. And it can be at that basic level to start. Um, I would continue to kind of work up the production quality because that's gonna help improve your attention on YouTube. Um, Yes, a single camera angle, uh, long form, just simply two talking heads, having a conversation can work for your, your YouTube podcast. But if you are able to add in other elements, say able to add in lower thirds or other sort of graphics that happen or bring in some sort of B-roll onto your video, um, that really features what your podcast is talking about or even multiple camera angles for your interviewees, uh, for your interview, for your show. That's just going to uh, increase the intrigue. It's going to keep people keep people interested in watching. It's going to really help improve that retention element. So that is something I would, wouldn't let that keep you from getting started. That's one of the big things I believe in. Get started with wherever you're at and then look to slowly improve by 1% each time. Look for little ways you can make that improvement to grow and to develop your show until you're producing just this excellent piece of a podcast episode. So if you're intrigued about getting your show up on YouTube as a podcast, there's a little guide that I have for you to help you get started and to really figure out what some of those checklist pieces are, what, what that process actually looks like. So head on over to nickpolkuski.com slash video podcasting 
and you can go grab that guide there and it should help you make that progress along the way because it's way too much to cover in this short video. So we've covered video podcasts, we've covered YouTube podcasting. Now it's time to unlock that third secret. And this one is really just another build off of what we've already been talking about. And that is to actually live stream your podcast. So with these first three secrets, we've really been talking about ways to slowly increase the engagement and kind of the, the connection that you have with your audience and with your, with your viewers and with your members. Um, and the live streaming is really that next element in that phase. It's going to increase it even more because people are going to be there with you for that event. They're going to be there during the recording and be able to interact with you and to really feel like they are a part of the show, that the show that they're helping to create the show along with you. Now, a few things to really think about when you're doing a live stream element. Again, I actually want you to first maybe focus on making sure you're getting good video that can be used for a YouTube podcast, but then you can start at, once you have that, you're gonna be able to start live streaming out to YouTube as well. Uh, and it's just a great way to kind of create uh, a lot of content in very little effort. And we're going to talk about it and even uh, take that to an even another level with this next secret. But now I don't have time to kind of cover all things live streaming. Um, I do have another session that talks a little bit about getting started with live streaming. So go check that out to learn a little bit more about what it takes to get your live stream off the ground and to get started with live streaming. But when you're thinking about the structure of your live stream uh, with your podcast and how that kind of relates, Think about it this way as maybe you start out with a little countdown timer up in the corner, um, kind of counting down to when you're going to get started with the main content piece of your show. And during that countdown timer piece, that's when you're engaging with your audience, asking them about their weekend, what the weather's like, at having them ask questions, maybe talking about some different things like that, really trying to build a lot of engagement elements with your audience during that little bit of time. And maybe you start out and it's very minimal. Maybe it's three minutes, maybe it's five minutes, maybe it's 10, maybe it gets a little longer, but set it up in a way that they know that, hey, once this clock hits zero, we're going to start the actual content of the podcast. I'm probably not gonna be paying attention to chat nearly as much um, because I wanna focus on that content creation. Because that's one thing you don't wanna do when you're, when you're live streaming uh, a podcast is to let the podcast suffer um, the content of the podcast suffer because you're paying too much attention to the people who are in the audience. So maybe that means the clock hits zero, you get started with the content, and you just deliver the content um, straight through without looking at the chat at all, without getting distracted in any sort of element. You're just talking to the camera or having that interview with your guests and not even worrying about the people who are there live. They're just kind of in the background. And then once you stop that piece, then go on for another little while of talking to your live audience, to engaging with them, to letting them ask questions, and then talking to the interviewee. Say if they, if you are doing an interview, allow your audience to participate in that kind of afterwards Q&A. Or another way to structure it would be to again have a little bit of that lead time, that pre-show, dive into your main content, but built in pause elements within your content. So say you're talking about the three best microphones. Uh, for example, um, you deliver microphone number one, and then you'd pause and interact with your audience for a little while, um, let them ask questions, answer some of their questions, and then you jump in to delivering the content around microphone number two. Pause, talk to your audience for a little while, create that engagement, so on and so on. And that is a great structure to really go ahead and, and build that content element into your podcast and make sure that the people who are watching your podcast afterwards don't feel like lesser citizens because they weren't live. You wanna make sure that the people who are viewing the replays, who are watching the video, listening to the audio of your podcast, feel like that is created for them and they're not missing out. What you want to happen for the live audience is they get the bonus. They get that extra little element um, that that's kind of almost a surprise. That's almost just a, they get to feel like part of the process, but you're not detracting from the the replay listeners or the replay viewers uh, experience. So what that would mean then afterwards, after you wrap your live stream, 
is you're going to want to actually go ahead and edit this video. And it could be downloading it, editing it, or grabbing it off of um, your your memory card or wherever you, however you recorded the podcast, and then actually going through and editing it, taking out those little engagement pieces if they're too involved, maybe deciding to leave some of them in if they're very relevant questions. That could be okay. You got to use a little bit of your judgment along that. Or it could be as simple as on YouTube, you trim off the beginning piece, the pre-show, you trim off the end piece um, just in the YouTube editor, and you release it as a podcast that way. I wouldn't make your live stream the podcast. I would release the other video or trim it and then add that podcasting tag or then add it to that podcasting playlist. Once it's been trimmed, it kind of slimmed down so it is your true podcast content. You're just essentially getting twice the reach or maybe not necessarily twice the reach but you're getting two pieces of great content for the effort of just creating one basically and that's the really nice thing about this is that it's not these secrets are allowing you to be more efficient in the way you're creating content um, and and give you more elements of content that you can then use to distribute to your audience to grow an audience and to grow that connection and That brings us to secret number four, which kind of takes this to another level, which takes that element specifically to another level in terms of repurposing your content and broadening your reach. And that is to actually go through and create shorts from your podcast. So it could be directly from the live stream or it could be from the condensed podcast. Um, Either works. Maybe sometimes you do both um, because, you, you know, maybe you want that audience engagement piece, that audience question as a 15 to 60 second short video uh trim it so it's in vertical format and then you can release it one as a youtube short which would be a great way um, because you are able to actually do some connection back to your actual channel and then to your podcast specifically um you can even youtube gives you the ability to clip directly from a video so if you're creating a youtube short i would clip directly from the video using the youtube feature because that will help create that connection back to that video. So if people want to see more, want to see the full video, they're able to jump there easier. I would then also go ahead and repurpose those shorts on other platforms. So on your Instagram Reels, on your TikToks, uh, as a video in LinkedIn, drop that in there, leave a link to the longer video as well, so people can jump back, see the full episode. And that's going to be the way that you're going to bring new people, especially into your podcast and help build that really grow that community podcasting 2.0 it has the potential to help you reach a wider audience to really create a community and create an engagement with those audience members and then to create content in a more efficient manner we were only able to cover a little bit of that here uh, in a brief overview uh, in this video because all the four of these secrets could be a much bigger topic and if you want to learn more just about video podcasting on YouTube, you can head on over to nickpolkowski.com slash video podcasting, and I dive a little bit more into some of that there.